What's the difference between a cult and a religion? We come across these types of questions every time the name Alice Lenshina is mentioned, the woman who was said to have died and still lived to tell the tale, the story of her meeting the Lord Jesus, her resurrection, her rise to power, informing one of the largest churches in Africa, the story of her changing African Christianity to the brutal massacre of her followers, the fall of the Lumpa Church. Her name is Alice Lenshin. Was she a true servant of God or a demonic possessed cult leader? Called by her African name, Mlenga Lobosha, was born in 1920 in the Kasoma village of Jinsali district of colonial Zambia, then known as the Northern Rhodesia. Born into the Bemba kingdom of the Crocodile clan, who were matrilineal people, meaning that inheritance or descent was passed down to the women of the tribe, and leadership roles were also held by women. But that became more in theory than in practice, and especially as African territories began to be colonized and adopted the Western cultures and beliefs. A child of her mother, Musungu Chimba, and her father, Luwo Shakasaka, a village policeman who fought in the First World War and was a messenger for the colonial administration, who was a polygamist and said to have neglected Lenshina's family, leaving them in suffering and poverty due to the ways of his life. This would contribute to Lenshina's future's ideology of marriage and polygamy. She was a member of the Presbyterian of the United Free Church of Scotland based at Luwa, where she was baptized and given the name Alice, and her name Lenshina is the Bemba form of the Latin word Regina, meaning Queen, Alice, the Queen. As a teenager, Alice got married to Gibson Kwale and had a child together, but soon after the child was born, Gibson fell ill and died shortly after. In those days, according to Bemba tradition, a widow was to be remarried to the late husband's brother or cousin in what was known as wife inheritance. So Alice Lenshina was to be married to Petros Chintankwa, her late husband's cousin. First, her body was to be cleansed of her dead husband's spirit. Alice and Petros had five children together. It was said that she was a good, loving and caring mother, an active member of the community who helped those in need and an avid church worshipper of the Lord. She was said to be prone to epileptic attacks and Alice became ill with cerebral malaria. In the September of 1953, she fell into a deep coma for three days and did not regain consciousness, declared dead as her family was in preparation for her burial. On the Monday of 16th September, Alice Lenshina had awakened. She was healed for Alice had met up with the Lord Jesus in heaven. She said that he gave her a prophecy. In the vision, she was standing on the shores of a large and seemingly endless ocean when the Christ Jesus appeared to her and told her to cross it. As she was walking through the waves which were building a path back to earth, a group of angels gave her a series of divine messages on how to cleanse the earthly people of evil against sorcery and witchcraft and was told that the right way to spread these messages was through African traditional methods as the Western practice of Christianity had become plagued with greed and overcome with earthly temptations. Alice Lenshina was rebaptized into the Church of Scotland by Reverend Paul Mushindo. As a member of the Presbyterian Church, she started to share her message in the local church meetings preaching about her prophecy and promoting Christianity through the integration of African culture and Bemba traditions. And most of the local people in the villages followed her in that she made Africans reconnect with their tribal roots. We have to understand that during Christianization of Zambia, African culture was pushed aside or banned by missionaries during the spread of the gospel. They influenced religion in the territory with their missionary churches and education with their missionary schools. So the local traditional teachers lost control in instilling African values in their own people. Thus, people losing their cultural norms and adopting Western beliefs. And a lot of Africans found that in Lenshina's teachings made them embrace the gospel of God through the Bemba tradition and culture. She became the focus of the revival movement at Luwa Mission. She had gained influence and popularity far beyond what the church expected. 
Alice Lenshina wanted to carry out her own sermons and baptism ceremonies. Her message of African Christian spirituality and shunning away from the Western teachings of the religion was something the priests and church elders did not want and mostly did not like, as this conflicted with their goal. And in less than a year after her awakening, Alice Lenshina was expelled from the Presbyterian Church in 1954. The priest said that it was because she lacked the proper missionary training, but mainly it was because she was an African and a woman. African women were not awarded higher positions of influence over a people in church. Africans were mainly seen as uneducated and primitive, and as colonialism thrived in Africa, some of the early missionaries were being replaced by other priests by the colonial authorities to push their agenda of imperialism. After word of Lenshina's expulsion out of the Presbyterian Church, some of the villagers would also leave the church to seek and find her, to follow Alice Lenshina wherever she would lead them, wherever she would go, they too would follow. At this time, Alice Lenshina and Petros were declared heretics by the Catholics, who also suffered by the defections of the African people out of their church. She continued to preach and perform healing rituals, and in 1955 she formed her own church together with her husband and newfound followers called the Lumpa Church. The word Lumpa means above all else or superior in the Bemba language. Her critics and the rival churches would indicate that this idea of superiority was one of the characteristics in the forming of a cult. The Presbyterian Church at Lubwa Mission was in a rivalry for dominance and influence with the Catholic White Fathers Mission at Ilondola, but both missions were now struggling to recruit new people to convert into their churches to grow their congregations. While the Lumpa Church would recruit and perform hundreds of baptisms per day, a ceremony that Alice Lenshina needed to perform herself, this was the only religious ritual needed to be done to become a member of the Lumpa Church. She was baptizing her followers, even those who had already been baptized in the Catholic Mission and the Presbyterian Church, and they would pay a small fee to the Lumpa Church. She would gain even more attention as her congregation grew. This was mainly because she was a Bemba and African woman who preached and showed her fellow Africans how to connect with God. Unlike the white missionaries who had nothing in common with the local Africans, but would tell Africans how to feel and worship the Lord. But in this context, it was just her, Alice Lenshina, one of their own carrying the message of the Lord Jesus Christ, the sense of belonging that Africans felt, and mostly with her. As she opposed colonialism that had oppressed many African people, Alice Lenshina now became a threat to the religious organizations while they were losing the control of religion on Africans. And we know the power of spirituality, a heart of faith. But in many times we have seen that religion has been used to corrupt the souls of men. Many people had started to travel long distances from the districts of Mpika, Kawambwa, Lundazi and Isoka to seek the baptism from Alice Lenshina. That by the end of 1955, Kasomo village had been visited by over 60,000 people and though still arriving at the rate of 1,000 people per week. Churches were being established on the northern province, in Lundazi of the eastern province and the Copper Belt. The Lumpa Church had now become the fastest growing religious movement in Africa. 1957. Alice Lenshina and her close associates decided to build one giant central cathedral, which would take months to build. And in 1958, the enormous church was completed, built with bent brick. The cathedral's dimensions were 140 by 42 meters, significantly a foot longer and wider than the largest local church at Elondola Catholic Mission. Many people saw this as a religious and political statement, an act of showing the Lumpa Church superiority against the other religious movements. The church was built at a home village of Kasomo. Thereafter, the village was to be called Sione or Zion, after the Holy Land of Israel or Jerusalem. She claimed that this was the actual place where Jesus Christ would descend to from heaven in his second coming. A crowd of 5,000 people attended the grand opening of the cathedral. In 1959, the church estimated membership was over 100,000 people, and in Chinsali alone, it had over 60 churches and a membership of over 35,000 of which 80 to 90 percent were adults. This was more than what the Catholics and the Presbyterian Church had in Central Africa, and different churches started to spread rumors of Alice Lenshina being demon-possessed, and that her healing miracles were satanic rituals. But these claims did not affect the growth of the Lumpa Church, as people started to call her Mayo, meaning mother, and others would call her the light of the world, Uluwutowachalo. People flocked and thousands taken the pilgrimage to Sione, the Lumpa Church had now spread into the neighboring countries of the Belgian Congo, Tanganyika, Nyasaland, and Southern Rhodesia, present-day Democratic Republic of Congo, Tanzania, Malawi, and Zimbabwe, respectively. 
The Lumpa Church's doctrine was inspired by Alice Lenshina's vision and prophecy, as the rules of the religious movement would state. The Lumpa Church is a church in which God and His Son Jesus Christ are to be praised. In our congregation, there is no citizen or foreigner, black or white, woman or man, but we are all of the same family. No one was banned from joining the ranks of the Lumpa Church. The doctrine continued to state, a Christian must not take part in backbiting, cursing, lying, pride, or any other sinful behaviors. In one of the other Lumpa Church doctrines, it would show its firm stance against witchcraft and sorcery. People would travel miles and miles to hand over their charms, bones, and amulets. Lenshina insisted that all those who wanted to be baptized should surrender to her any idols or witchcraft materials that they had as a form of purification. Even Catholic crucifix and rosaries were being handed over, as they were seen to be close to idol worship. The Lumpa Church strongly opposed polygamy and widow inheritance that had plagued villages and tribes of the country. She started to claim back the Bemba matrilineal way of life. As she appointed women as counselors in the church, the women who were mostly overlooked in westernized Christian churches, the Lumpa Church became one of, if not the first church, in the world to put women in religious positions of authority. Alice Lenshina would compose hymns for the Lumpa Church, the hymns she claimed that were taught to her by Jesus Christ himself in the Bemba language. Singing out loud these words with her congregation, the words they could relate to, the hymns were evangelical and uplifting, making the Lumpa Church one of the first churches in the country that allowed Africans to worship God in their own native language of Ichibemba. While the white missionary preachers favored to worship in Latin, but to the Africans, embracing the African spirituality through Christ was one of the ways of resisting Western colonization. The Lumpa Church was supported by traditional leaders and chiefs because the church promoted worship through the blending of their cultures, which they were losing through the white missionary preachers. The church would also get support from the political front, a blessing from Hari Mwangankumbula, who led the African National Congress, ANC, which was in the forefront fighting for the liberation and independence of the country. Harim Wangankumbula described Alice Lenshina as the African spiritual leader of an African national church. Because the Lumpa movement had the nationalist aspect towards its goal, this developed into strong ties between the Lumpa church and the ANC from 1955 to 1957. This was through two of Alice Lenshina's dedicated supporters, Sandy Rain Mulenga, who was known to have expressed strong anti-European views, and Robert Kaunda, who was a Congress supporter and the brother to Kenneth Kaunda as the propaganda of the ANC was put across the Lumpa Church. But in 1958, Kenneth Kaunda and the more active nationalists broke away from Hari Mwangankumbula's ANC to form the Zambia African National Congress and later formed UNIP, which was more militant in promoting mass disturbances, acts of arsony, strikes, and boycotting the 1959 elections. And just like the ANC, UNIP would also support the Lumpa Church. But it was at this time when Alice Lenshina was moving her church away from the extremist politics for her anti-European views were mostly directed to the white missionaries. Because the church had a strict doctrine of rejecting all earthly authorities, saying that the only authority they recognized was Jesus Christ, who they believed spoke through Alice Lenshina. And at that time, the authority was colonialism, which was a form of evil in itself. Alice Lenshina's refusal to register the Lumpa Church under the provisions of the Society's Act was also a sign of denying earthly authorities in 1959. As the members of the Lumpa Church decided not to pay taxes to the colonial government, her followers would also refuse to obey their traditional leaders and chiefs. As they were quoted to have said, We know no government, no chiefs. We only know Alice Lenshina. They swore total loyalty to her, and only her. The Lumpa Church did not allow its members to vote, and with the 1962 elections that resulted into a unique uncoalition government, the Lumpa Church was seen as the only mass movement that was not on board for the struggle of national independence. It will now be viewed as an obstacle in the independence of the country. UNIP wanted to ensure undivided and total allegiance, and any organization that did not offer this loyalty was now seen as a threat to the liberation of the nation. Kaunda and other leaders held meetings in trying to convince the Lumpa Church to unite with the political party. But the Lumpa Church declined and kept their doctrine of distancing themselves from politics as propaganda started to spread from the unique camps that Alice Lenshina made her followers drink urine and eat excrement. That too did not work as the church grew stronger. And to show their rejection of UNIP, some of the Lumpa Church members burnt their UNIP party cards. But in return, UNIP militants would burn down some of the Lumpa Churches. 
both the UNIP and the Lumpa Chase Rapid Growth had a similarity because both organizations had an aspect of rejecting white colonial rule, which Native Africans mostly agreed with. Unique party members throughout the province started going around demanding for party cards. For those that didn't have, they would face intimidation, taunting the Lumpa Church worshippers who were committed to their beliefs. This started as verbal altercations to the constant harassments that turned into physical attacks. From 1961 to 1963, several battles had broken out of Chinsali, where guns and spears were used on both sides and people were killed as both sides became more aggressive towards each other. Some reports claim that Alice Lenshina's appeal for the protection of her people to the police were ignored. That by the November of 1963, Alice Lenshina decided to move her followers out of the villages they shared with the UNIP party members to establish their own villages, but this was done without the permission of the chiefs or the local government authority. But the Lumpa Church members could now practice their religion without the outside interference. This religious isolation was prompted by Alice Lenshina trying to avoid any confrontations from unique party members who harassed her followers. The church had earlier established tribunals of justice with Alice Lenshina, her deacons, preachers and church counselors that formed guidelines in how the Lumpa church should live within their community. So the newly established villages would live on these very principles. And if one was to break these rules, the tribunal would decide what form of punishment to be given, regardless of the local authorities and the laws of the government. This form of self-governance would become a problem as it was seen as the formation of a separate state within a state fighting for its independence. Alice Lenshina was now the enemy of the religious organizations, the chiefs, the colonial government and the political party of UNIP which saw that the only way to independence was through the unification of all people of the country, one Zambia, one nation. UNIP won the major elections, defeating their ANC rivals and Kenneth Kaunda becoming the first and only Prime Minister of Northern Rhodesia, forging the path to independence of the country in the months to come. But tensions and fights still continued between the Lumpa Church members and the UNIP militants. That on the 31st of July 1964, Prime Minister Kenneth Kaunda flew to Chinsali and informed Alice Lenshina and her deacons of government's decision that all Lumpa illegal settlements were to be vacated within one week and the inhabitants were to return to their original villages. All unauthorized Lumpa villages were to be destroyed. This was non-negotiable. But the Lumpa villagers vowed not to move as they barricaded themselves, praying to God, waiting for the impending battle. Some government officials in the company of armed policemen tried to convince the Lumpa villagers to return back to the villages. As Mick Bond, a government official who worked in the country from 1962 to 1973, wrote in his book, From Northern Rhodesia to Zambia, I thought the Lumpa villagers were very impressive. He continued to write, Their appearance was exemplary. Just what we in the public affairs had thought on our tour, every village should aspire to. He wrote, All their houses were built in rows, their grain beans likewise, their latrines also in rows behind the nicely thrashed houses. Most of them had defensive stockades, which were off-putting, but they too were neatly built. It made me sad that we were forcing them to leave such excellent places to return to their old villages, where the rest of the inhabitants did not show such domestic pride. The deadline of 19th July had passed, but the Lumpa Church followers did not move out of the villages as tensions rose. We cannot live with people who drink and smoke. Who will prosecute us for not doing the same? The Lumpa Church forbade their followers in the taking of alcohol. We are to be moved like cattle when it was UNIP or the government who moved us originally and burnt our houses and churches. But the Prime Minister's orders were to be obeyed. The Lumpa followers had genuine fear of confrontations from UNIP. As word started to spread, we did tell these people if they disobeyed the Prime Minister, we should have to deal with them. Our police we will kill you. And on the 24th of July, a routine mobile unit was ambushed as they entered the Lumpa village of Chapaola in Chinsali. Two police officers were killed, Inspector Smith and Constable Chanda. They were speared to death. And the next day, in an attempt to get their bodies, the district commissioner, John Hanna, supported by the police reinforcement led by John Bird, attempted to reason with the villagers to lay down their weapons. But the villagers started to fire and the police fired back and the village was to be taken by force and destroyed. 
This resulted in the deaths of many Lumpa followers. Many Lumpa church members took to the bushes and raided the neighboring villages, burning and killing. Many people died as the violence kept on escalating. This was the unfolding of the Lumpa uprising. The decision was taken to deploy the army, handing over from the police to handle the situation. And now all the Lumpa church villages must be taken by a show of force and if possible to capture and detain Alice Lenshina. It was now a must that she should be arrested. It was now decided all major villages, Chilanga and Sione, should be cleared by the 31st of July 1964. So the Northern Rhodesian soldiers along with the British army that had remained in the country, they were now coming to church, but it was not to pray. This was a morning raid in the village of Sioni. They reached at dawn and at 8.40, the district commissioner John Hanna and the army used the same procedure as at Chapaula when recovering the bodies of the two policemen. As soon as the troops were in position in front of the village, the district commissioner John Hanna spoke through the megaphone as he recounts on the events of that morning. We arrived at dawn. The troops were formed up in line on the outskirts of the village and when they were ready, I went forward about 20 yards and spoke to the villagers through my loud hailer explaining who I was and asking them to surrender. I could see a lot of people moving around in a furtive way, but there was no response. I went on for about 10 minutes, but as I seemed to be getting nowhere, I started walking back to the colonel who was standing on the back of his Land Rover. I knew that as soon as I handed over to him, I was in effect giving the authority to fire and to kill. And the Lumpa church members rose from the bushes and yelled Jericho and attacked with spears, bows and arrows and a few homemade guns to fire at the troops and the soldiers retaliated with rifles and machine guns. Several Lumpa members were killed and wounded and only a few soldiers injured. After 30 minutes, the firing stopped. And again, the district commissioner appealed to the Lumpa church villagers to surrender and lay down their arms. But then again, the Lumpa followers attacked the army. Their reaction was to defend their homes and village with their own lives and the army charged with gunfire. As the battalion commander gave the order to advance into the village and overpower the resistance around the cathedral. The resistance continued with women who held children to their breasts with one hand and threw spears with the other. There were stories that Alice Lenshina had told her followers that she had prayed for them and that bullets would not penetrate through their flesh, that their faith had made them immune to the firepower of guns and that she had given them passports to heaven. The reports recorded 60 Lumpas killed in church headquarters attack. Some would claim that the death toll was over 100 people that died. Women, men and children fighting in the face of automatic weapons. It was a massacre. And this brutality was witnessed in the eyes of the children, the faces of innocence their cries for help as the bodies of their parents lie waste on the ground. The village is on fire, homes set ablaze, a trail of blood on the church floors, smeared on the walls of the cathedral. The building at Sione, the church of Uluseka Mutola, the cathedral's name that was taken from the book of Matthew, chapter 11, verse 28. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavily burdened, and I will give you rest, but this time, there was no place to rest. There were no shouts of joyous worship, only screams of horror, the cries for help. There is blood in the cathedral. Reports of 160 juveniles taken as prisoners and one of the captured replied as he was asked why they continued the attacks. He said, I wanted to go to heaven. As the deacon was quoted to have said, we are all happy to die for our God. It is not a bad thing to leave this earth. But Alice Lenshina managed to escape with the help of her followers from the attacks at Sione. But this decision would haunt her. She tried to give herself up several times, but her husband Petros and other deacons advised her not to. As the government issues a nationwide search for her capture, as the newspaper articles would read, Alice Lenshina wanted dead or alive. Following the attacks of Sione, the soldiers continued to carry out operations of Lumpa villages. Peter Moss, who was a district officer and present at Sioni, reflected on the events that somewhat traumatized him. 
was quoted in the book From Northern Rhodesia to Zambia to have said, After Sioni, this action, in what I thought the army and its new recruits had behaved badly, I recall having a long discussion with the district commissioner, in which I said that we did not seem to approach the problem in a humanitarian public affairs way, which we all understood. I felt by then that we were probably going too far and lost our way by carrying out these military coercions. The Lumpa villages are on fire. The rampage had claimed 500 lives in three weeks, as a week of national mourning has been declared for all those who died in 10 days in the bloody fighting. The trouble spread out of Chinsali area into the neighboring Isoka district, Lundazi, Mpika and Kasama. Alice in hiding and brother quoted in the newspaper, Alice, you must give up. 7th of August, 1964, Peshuko village in Lundazi was attacked and hundreds of Alice Lenshina followers would be massacred as terror was brought upon their lives. Rumors of mass graves being dug some reports would indicate that only a handful were decently buried because they were recognized as dedicated Catholics by a priest who witnessed the massacre. Many Lumpa church members were persecuted and hunted for the years to come and over 14,000 of Alice Lenshina followers fled to find refuge in the Democratic Republic of Congo. The death toll had risen to a thousand people being killed in the uprising. 11th August 1964, Alice Lenshina had finally surrendered. She had given herself up to the authorities to face judgment, to face the law. Alice Lenshina was not blamed for inciting any violence that had happened. Even the Prime Minister, Dr. Kenneth Kaunda, never called for her to be trialed in court. She was not charged for any involvement of the political disturbances that had occurred. Her view of the uprising was to those who misunderstood her religious teachings. She blamed those who used the church to further their political agenda. Even though Alice Lenshina did not face trial, she was the main figure of the Lumpa church and she was to be detained for 11 years by the government. She was detained in Mumba district together with her husband Petros. In 1965, they were moved to a minimum security detention facility in Kalabo district near the Angolan border and in the October of 1967, they escaped but they were later caught and imprisoned for six months in Mukushi district. In the May of 1970, Dr. Kenneth Kaunda, now the president of Zambia, placed her under detention and ordered for the destruction of the large temple in Sioni of Kasomo village. The once magnificent cathedral structure, which was full of life, would now be reduced to ashes. The temple that was built with bent brick was brought to rubble. Small pieces of rock, fragments of stone. This was the final indication in the fall of the Lumpa church. Her husband, Petros Chintankwa, died in 1972. The man who was there with her in the time of her resurrection, her rise, her fall to the surrender and would be imprisoned together the man who always believed in a word was no more. The December of 1975, Alice Lenshina was released from detention, but was placed under house arrest in New Chilenge of Lusaka district. Alice Lenshina died on the 7th of December 1978, while under house arrest. Her body was to be laid to rest on the foundation she once built. She was buried on the very place her cathedral once stood, at Uluseka Mutola, in her village of Kasomo. Time will tell her story and history will remember her name. Alice Lenshina might be the most influential woman in Zambia's history. Her religious influence, her church grew to even surpass the white missionary churches that were backed by empires. 100,000 people might seem like a fairly moderate number in today's time, but in 1964, with a population of less than 5 million people, that had 800,000 voters. She was influential, that people gave their lives to her teachings and literally would die in her honor. That's how powerful she was. So, was she the cure in the religious brainwashing of the Africans? Or was she a threat to Kaunda's authoritative rule? Or was she an obstacle to Zambia's freedom? Is this one of the prices we had to pay for the independence of the country? Would have the Lumpa Church become a separate state within Zambia, causing future conflicts of the country? 
Alice Lenshina created a society of Africans who worship Jesus Christ and would still be proud of their Africanity and culture. People who lived together in harmony, a community of people who shared food, beliefs and worship, religious people who had a similar way of life. Maybe that's the definition of a cult, but what small religious organization is not seen as one? She did make mistakes in other people's eyes, of course she was human, but to the people that believed in her works, she was literally a saint, sent by God. Was she the African woman carrying the message of Jesus Christ, or was Alice Lenshina a false prophet, hero, or villain? Those are the questions only time will tell, questions that only history has the answers to.